my video lecture okay so our topic for today is animal interactions where we are going to study many different types like mutualism commensalism parasitism predation okay guys if you have not subscribed to my channel kindly do subscribe share the video and if you like the video do like it okay now let's stop start with our topic so under animal interactions there are many different types okay but uh, there are basically three main categories of animal interactions okay so i will write them down the first category is the category in which both the organisms which are in the interaction they are benefited okay so if there is an interaction between two organisms and if both are benefited then they belong to one category the second category is where one organism is benefited and the other organism is neutral now what do you mean by neutral so neutral means that the other organism is neither benefited nor harmed so if there are two organisms in a interaction one of them will be benefited because of the other whereas the other one need neither be harmed nor benefited so there is nothing which is going to affect it so it is like it is in the neutral thing and the third type of interaction is the interaction in which one organism is benefited and other one is harmed okay so here for the first time we can see that because of the interaction one of them is getting the benefit the other one is harmed so now the first criteria of the interaction when both the organisms are benefited such an interaction is called as mutualism okay then the second type of interaction in which one organism is benefited and the other one is neutral such a type of interaction is called as commensalism and the third type under the third category there are two different types of interactions so the interaction in which one organism is benefited and the other is harmed here we have two categories uh, the first one i am writing parasitism and the other one i am writing over here is predation all right so basically in today's short lecture we are going to study about mutualism commensalism parasitism and predation and please remember all these different types of interactions between these two organisms okay all this can be called as symbiotic associations please remember that okay so what is the meaning of symbiotic association symbiotic associations are the close interactions between any two organisms and any of these three may occur so both might be benefited one might be benefited the other would be neutral or one might be benefited and the other would be harmed all these interactions are called as symbiotic relationships is this clear okay now let us start with the first type which is called as mutualism all right so let me rub this off now mutualism is the relationship in which both the organisms are benefited okay so examples of mutualism if you want so let me write down over here first one mutualism okay and again the definition both organisms are benefited so the best example of this is lichens okay so i have already made a video on lichens okay you can see on the right hand side of your screen a pop up window will occur okay so if you want after watching this video you can go there or right now you can go there so what are lichens i have explained in that lecture so in lichens the algae and fungi are both helping each other to survive okay the algae provides food and the uh, fungus provides mineral water and shelter to the algae and both of them are helping each other to survive both are benefited so that is the example of mutualism okay now we come to the second type of interaction the second type of interaction is called commensalism 
all right see each of these categories has many examples i am trying to keep it simple by giving you very less example so that you can remember now in commensalism what is going to happen is one organism benefits other remains neutral okay so other one will not be benefited neither will it be affected now there are many examples for this let us write down a few examples first example in commensalism if you want is <coughs> you can write about sucker fish and shark okay so what is this example so everybody knows sharks okay they are one of the greatest predators present in the marine environment so these sucker fishes are small fishes which are attached to the belly of the shark okay so what happens obviously they have a modified mouth sucker fish with which they can create suction and attach to the belly of the shark so what happens is whenever the shark swims that sucker fish gets free transport and whenever it wants to re uh, release itself it reduces that suction pressure and it can release the shark doesn't get affected by that but the sucker fish gets the advantage of free transport so the sucker fish is getting benefited shark is not getting harmed nor it is getting benefited so it is a commensal relationship it is also called as commensalism this is first example second example which i can remember of commensalism is golden jackal and tiger okay so now what happens is this is an example based on indian terrain so what happens is tigers when they hunt and they drag their prey okay so what happens is when they are dragging their prey small bits of those uh, small bits of the flesh drops along the way as the tiger is dragging its prey and because of that what happens is this golden jackal which is present it just follows the tiger at a safe distance and whatever those drop pieces of meats are there that jackal will consume so here you can see the golden jackal is getting benefited the tiger is neither getting benefited nor it is getting harmed so it is in a neutral position so this is another example of commensalism i hope you are getting this point if you want i can give you another example that is a plant based example so orchids which are present orchids are epiphytes now what is an epiphyte i will write down the word for you over here e p i p h y t e s so ep epiphytes are plants which grow on other plants okay so epiphytes are short plants which grow on the stem of tall plants okay they do not cause harm to the plant on which they are growing but because to get sunlight they grow on the branches of other plants these are called epiphytes epi means above and these epiphytes they collect the moisture from the air so they have got these aerial roots so orchids are a type of epiphytes which grow on other plants and because of that they get sunlight they get support whereas the plant on which these epiphytes are getting growing they are neither getting harmed nor they are getting benefited so again it is an example of commensalism so i will write down an example over here okay the third example is orchids growing as epiphytes on other plants so epiphytes are plants which grow on other tall plants to get sunlight and they do not harm the plant on which they grow is this clear now we come to the third interaction all right the third type of interaction is going to be so now we come to the third category where one is benefited and the other organism is harmed so for that we are going to first take the example of parasitism now what is parasitism now in parasitism there are basically two different organisms the organism which gets benefited that organism is called as the parasite whereas the organism which gets harmed that organism is called as the host okay many examples of parasitism can be given okay for example any microorganism which enters your body and causes disease is a parasite because that organism is getting food material it is able to survive inside your body whereas it is causing damage to you so it is called as a parasite for example you can take uh, plasmodium plasmodium causes malaria it destroys the rbcs so plasmodium is the parasite whereas we or human beings are the host okay then you can give the example of mosquito mosquito basically feeds on your blood so it is getting benefited we are getting harmed so again an example of 
parasite and host again we are the host mosquito is a parasite one short thing that i would like to tell you parasites are of two types okay if parasites are basically present outside the body these are called as ectoparasites for example mosquito is an ectoparasite if the parasites are present inside the body and doing the harm they are called as endoparasites all right so mosquito is an ectoparasite whereas plasmodium is an endoparasite any virus or bacterium which enters your body is an endoparasite leech which sucks blood is an ectoparasite okay because it attaches to your skin from the outside so is this clear so in parasitism one of the organisms is benefited it is called as the parasite the other is harmed and it is called as the host now let us come to the last in so examples of parasitism i have already told you three examples all right let us write them down over here uh, first example is plasmodium and man the second one is going to be mosquito and man third if you want i can write down leech and man all right is this clear now we come to the last type of interaction all right and for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to rub this off as we are running out of canvas to write so the fourth one i'm going to write over here and that is predation now predation is again an interaction in which one of the organisms is benefited and the other is harmed but normally please remember in predation one of the organisms is normally killed predation results in the death of an organism whereas the other one gets nutrition so again over here the organism which gets benefited that organism is called as the predator whereas the organism which gets killed or which get harmed is called as the prey please remember these terminologies best example is you can just imagine a tiger hunting a deer okay so tiger is the predator the tiger will kill the deer so the deer becomes the prey so what is the difference between parasitism and predation see predation will normally kill the organism which is getting harmed parasitism most in most cases it is not going to kill the organism obviously death can occur but only in extreme cases so in parasitism the parasite will harm the prey uh, will harm the host but it will not result in death of the host in most cases but in predation the prey is going to get killed most of the time by the predator so that is the difference between predation and parasitism so examples any carnivorous animal hunting a herbivorous animal cheetah hunting a deer okay so those are the examples of predation so i will write it down over here example carnivores hunting herbivores is this clear so guys with that we have finished this very small uh, lecture on animal interactions right so we have studied mutualism commensalism parasitism and predation all these interactions are called as symbiotic interactions so if you have not subscribed to my lecture uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel kindly do so if you like the lecture put down a like please share it with your friends guys we need to grow okay and thank you for all your love and support and that's it for this topic thank you